Welcome everybody to the Grow Pow Wow. Today we got Riven, good friend of ours, who is going to be on talking about grow boxes, specifically earth boxes. So if you want to hear about some earth boxes and how this wonderful grower has been able to produce some absolutely amazing crops from, from earth boxes, then stick around. So, welcome everyone and thank you all for coming. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me, yeah. Um, I, uh, I've been growing with the earth boxes now. The last uh, video, I should say, was a compilation video, kind of summarizing up my last four grows uh, with the earth boxes. And, you know, I, I learned a lot just by doing that video, <laughs> kind of looking back through all of my grows and, you know, how everything went. So, pretty interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so how many years now? Uh, it's been two. Two years. Um, I've done four complete runs with them, and I've grown them inside and outside um, with varying degrees of success. So um, I think they work better in the tent <laughs> with with lights. Uh, they don't. Well, they did okay in the greenhouse, but uh, you know, I chalk it up to the. Uh, weather I and mean, you can't turn the you can't turn the sun up on full power and turn it off when you want so <laughs> yeah that's one of those things man you know and uh, i've talked to many growers about this very recently is is the you know uh every grower no matter what they're growing or where they are in the world every now and then you're gonna have a bad crop you know that's that's just the the joy of the game you know of, of growing uh but when you get, do get those really nice crops it's it's always a great thing i remember that uh spring i was really excited to <coughs> bring the earth boxes out into the greenhouse and because i thought man these will these will get huge out there right but nope <laughs> No, the sun didn't cooperate, and uh, you know I had some fairly small plants, and I think it was uh, out of that one in the greenhouse. So, gotcha, it was, gotcha. It was just, it was disappointing, but uh, you know I'm gonna just stay in the tent with the earth boxes now, and you know they work well in there. For sure, for sure. Now, probably many of the listeners have not ever used earth boxes at all. Can you kind of just break it down and, like, from the ground up, what, what's it comprised of, and then what do you do with it? Sure. Um, well, an earth box really is just a brand name um, for a SIP system, you know, a sub-irrigated planter, SIP, SIP system. Um, and, you know, all SIP systems are pretty much pretty much the same there's a reservoir in the bottom and on top of that reservoir is a air space um, and on top of that air space is usually a, a grate or some sort of support with air holes in it uh, that supports the soil on top of that so on top of that you have all the soil so uh, so basically you have this reservoir where the roots can reach down or the soil can you know wick the water up and and that's basically the way the earth boxes are designed is to wick the uh, wick up through the soil the water so in the earth box it has two um, I don't know columns I guess of soil that go down into the water and so those are always <clears throat> completely soaked in the water and you know the, the rest of the soil will wick uh, what it needs when it needs it um, you know a lot of people I think think that the roots probably come down and then dangle down you know for myself it seems like the roots like to kind of go down the sides of the earth boxes and kind of dip in the water there I hadn't really seen any dangling down through the grate but um then again i haven't taken them apart for the last three runs <laughs> anyway i've only taken them apart once or twice 
twice, I guess. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, that's basically what they are, are sub irrigating, um, planters. And, you know, I made, uh, well, I made four, uh, 30 gallon, uh, sip containers in the greenhouse, uh, this past summer. And that was really successful actually. Um, but I, I approached it a little bit differently and used some air stones and, um, yeah, it just had a lot of soil, and I think it was uh, because of that the plants did well. Right on. So what um, nutrient regimen, or are you using uh, organics in, in these earth boxes? Yeah, well, well, when I first bought these earth boxes, um, I bought them as what they called them at the time was probiotic wellness garden. And I was like, what the hell's a probiotic wellness garden? So I had to educate myself on that first off. And basically it's just, you know, organic, you know, you're talking about microbes and you're talking about really uh, lactobacillus. And that's why they call it probiotic wellness garden, which, you know, it's just another buzzword. So, um, but that's how I initially bought them. And you know, so I set them up that way. And um, when I first made my soil that's still in them, um, it's this soil is two years young. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, so when I first mixed it up, you know, I put in, you know, all of their stuff, which came with the kit, which was basically uh, cow manure and... Uh, uh some pro mix and um jesus i'm thinking back two years here to <laughs> to what i put in there but it was basically all organic and you know the key to the whole system um was using the em1 which is uh stands for essential microbes and em1 is the uh, brand name i guess and basically, it's a lactobacillus, <clears throat> excuse me, a lactobacillus solution um, that you spray on or put in the reservoir or do both. I actually do both. Um, and, you know, you're basically replenishing uh, the microbes every time you water or every time you spray. Um, so that's kind of the key to it, that in conjunction with something called Bokashi. So I'm getting a little ahead of myself, I guess. But um, so the soil is one thing, you know, once I had the soil set up, then it's basically um, top dressing is the way that I went about it. And also putting stuff in the reservoir as well. So and when I say stuff, I mean, um, I originally started out with um, just recharge an EM1. I was putting a mixture of that down in the reservoir when I first started the very first run. Um, and top dressing uh, with Bokashi and spraying with EM1. And the Bokashi, um, when you put that on top as like a top dress, you spray it um, with the EM1. And uh, you put the plastic cover back over it, and then the mycelium will come up through the soil and consume all of that as food and bring it back down into the soil. And then the mycelium disappears, and you know you do the whole process over again. So, um, but you know, um, at the second run, I did things a little bit different than I did the third run, and then. Um, this last run, um, I've completely switched gears again, and um, I've, I'm now using a clover cover crop to help replenish the soil because, like I said, all I've been doing is top dressing this soil for two years now, and um, I wanted to uh, get some nutrients back in there, especially the nitrogen. So, um, I bought some white Dutch clover from uh, Build a Soil. And uh, when I got done growing uh, this past July, I grew that 
it as just a, a cover crop and uh, let it go. Um, and only just recently, maybe, well, a couple of months ago now, I guess, uh, I chopped it, covered it over, and let the microbes consume it all up. And now when you look in the earth boxes right now, they're just kind of sitting there. Um, there's no clover left. There's no roots left. It's just soil, just black, rich looking soil. So. Wow. So they're, they're ready to go again. They're ready to go. Yeah. I'm just waiting for this run of the auto pots to get done. And then, uh, then I'm going to put your beans in there. All right. All right. Yeah. That's always exciting. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'd like to ask. What, what was it that drew you to the earth boxes? Was it a convenience? Was it the style? Was it the blood that was coming out of it? The well, for me, um, it was convenience because I, I was looking for a way to grow where I didn't have to do uh, as much work. Um, you know, I have a disability, and um, for me, leaning over and spending a lot of time in the garden um is something that i really have a hard time doing um i really <laughs> you know just putting water in sometimes can be a chore uh so um so that's why i really got them uh, because i wanted something that i could kind of set it and forget it and uh yeah, it, it, it's been working out pretty well. I mean, the only thing with the earth box is, uh, you know, the, when you have a big plant in there, like I had uh, my very first plant, which was a ripper haze, I ended up getting 11 and a half ounces off of that one. And um, yeah, it was, it was the biggest plant, actually. Um, but that plant um, was drinking uh two and a half to three gallons a day at its peak so i was like putting water in that thing every single day and it was dry every day uh, yeah it was one thirsty mother i'll tell you but uh yeah so yeah convenience billy so and i bought these auto pots probably like I don't know. I, I have to say maybe it was more than a year ago and I just kind of let it sit there. I, I had plans on growing them alongside the earth boxes, but you know, like all good things, <laughs> you know, plans don't always come the way you plan them. So, but anyway, I'm, I'm growing with them now and I have four um, of them in there and I really love having this reservoir hooked up to these, um, auto pots you know you really all you have to do is put water in the reservoir and i only have to do that every you know three or four days because it's a 12 gallon reservoir and the plants are drinking a lot now it's it it probably goes down about six gallons a day i'd say right now gotcha so would you say that for most people and for that have health issues and are kind of struggling getting you know things taken care of sometimes um, would you say that the earth boxes are a better way to go than a different system that you've used previously yeah i mean i i started out growing in fabric pots um you know my first few grows were in fabric pots and I did outside grows uh, with fabric pots, and uh, I, yeah, I mean, it was a lot, a lot more work. It really was. Um, you know, I had to water them, you know, often. And then the other thing is, is, is not knowing if you're watering enough or watering too much. You know, with the earth boxes, you pretty much, it's pretty much foolproof. Now, if you watch. Jeremy's videos on build a soil and, and a lot of people do and he does has great information. He has specific ways that he does it, but I didn't follow any person. I just kind of did it on my own. And you know, the first run that I did, I I didn't let them dry back at all. 
you know, I totally fucked that run up. But, you know, I had my biggest plant in that run also. So I'm like, yeah, I might have fucked up the watering, but I still ended up with a huge fucking plant. So it just kind of goes to show you that even if you do it wrong, you still can be successful. So, you know, and that was my whole thing with my video series is, you know, it's like, you know, I started off not necessarily doing it right. And then maybe I did a few things wrong the next run. And, you know, but every run I've been successful and I've had, you know, good, good weed out of it. So and, and you use the same organics and Bokashi style in the in the uh, tanks also. In the auto pots, is that what you? No, in the in a fabric in the fabric pots. Oh, using in the this? fabric pots. No, I started out with I was started out with the Fox Farm uh, family there. You know, with the with the three bottles. I think everyone started sure. with. You know, what did you? What did? What do you bit. think? What do you think in comparison now, dealing with the issues that you the system? What, what, which one did you yeah. like better? The the finished product on. I mean, looking back, the plants that I w- was growing in the fabric pots were were really decent sized plants as well, and and produced good weed as well. Um, you know, I I honestly couldn't say for sure. I mean, I I just think it's easier, you know, um, you know, and I and as far as you know, how my weed is, the only thing i can say is some of the guys have have had it and really enjoyed it and uh everyone i do give it to uh enjoys it uh my my daughter actually buys at a dispensary and always tells me that my weed is far better than the dispensary weed so that always makes me feel good but i i think she just says that to make me feel good (laughs) I don't know, Riv. I've I've been to a lot of dispos in my time, and, uh, you know, from my experience, way back in the day, yeah, um, there was definitely a a (gasps) great amount, a lot of good medicine. And nowadays, uh, I find more and more that, you know, people are seeing year-plus-old product you know, which has lost a lot of its medicinal value, which is which is just a shame. But uh, that's what happens when, you know, you really have no control over street production. You know, they, they may have control over how many dispos are out there and how many actual uh, grows are out there, but they, they haven't actually regulated the amount of production. And I think that's what you know, we're really seeing an impact in the industry here now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and you don't know, you know, what they're putting in their plants, you know, unless you know the growers, unless you've gone <coughs> to see where your, your medicine's coming from. And that was the thing when I first started growing. I, I you know, that's one of the reasons I started growing because, you know, I was at the dispensary every fucking, you know, every week I'd go once a week and stock up, but, you know, well, for convenience, I guess growing has been great that way, but, you know, just knowing where my medicine's coming from is important to me. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, even on top of that, um, you know, there's a lot to be said for, uh, a home grower um, spending time and caring for their plants. There's a big difference between the uh, end product result and med- medicinal value as opposed to something that's coming out of a giant warehouse where there's really nobody paying you know, a close attention to one individual plant or maybe a few individual plants that they're you know, producing a product for their uh, um, patients, collective what have you uh depending on what state you're in and what you're doing and what your legalities are you know right. so yeah it, it's a it's a crazy thing um but i think that that definitely comes into play uh and we're going to do another episode um about 
frequencies and plant frequencies and human frequencies uh, and kind of delve into that a little bit more. So if you've enjoyed the episode thus far, definitely check that episode out when we get that done. That'll be up in probably the next few weeks here. We'll get that get that all recorded and, and done up. But um, before we get wrapped up, I would love to know more about the Bokashi because I know that you've uh, touched on that, but there is a whole slew of information as far as the Bokashi goes. So what can you tell me about Bokashi? Well... Um, Bokashi, uh, it's a fermented, from what I remember, <laughs> and more of this stuff as I get all my videos, because I'll, I'll have to look all this stuff up, I can't remember, but it, it's created by fermenting, it's a fermentation process, and it, and it's fairly acidic, I guess, um, from what I gather, but the, it's really food for the mycelium, and the mycelium is really your transport for all of the nutrients to get into your soil to be available for all those microbes so you know so when you first start using bokashi you have to be careful around tender plants or, or small plants and i made that mistake early on when i was using it and, and burned a plant and killed it um from the bokashi so yeah because yeah. it like i said it's acidic but it works in combination i think with the em1 really well um i usually will have mycelium growth on it within two days um covered or uncovered because i used it this past summer out in the greenhouse in uh those boxes out there and uh you know Mycelium still grew uncovered. So yeah. But that's that's the key, you know, is what from what I understand is, you know, that mycelium growth is very important. And I used to think <laughs> it was bad. I used to kill the stuff. I go, oh my God, I got this white mold growing on top of my plants. What the hell is going on? I'd kill it, you know, go, go, you know, I'd scoop it up and try to get rid of it and stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, you got to educate yourself. I didn't know any of that early on and who, who probably would, I mean, you know, so, but yeah, I mean, as far as growing in these, um, over <laughs> the four runs, um, I've had, I got it right here, 4.61 pounds. So, you know, a little over one pound per run on average, if you wanted to average it out. But, you know, like I said, I've had some really big runs and some really small runs. So, but on average, about a pound and an eighth, maybe, per run right now. So, And that's on how many earth boxes? Three. And how many watts do you have uh, in your room? Um, how many watts? I have three uh, Mars Hydro 3000s. The so 900. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gotcha. Only running, I'm only running two right now, but um, for the four auto pots, but they seem to be doing pretty well. So I haven't had to turn the third one on. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Questions or anything? I put everyone to sleep is what it was. No, it was good <laughs> listening. <laughs> Your voice is very calming, Riven. It's it's nice. <laughs> thanks. thanks. Yeah, I and and I think it was um fifteen plants too that in those four runs as well. Cause you know, I've I've done it where I've run just one single plant in an earth box but i've also run two at a time in an earth box and you know and you get the results you would think you get either two medium-sized plants or one big ass plant so sure sure now one other question that i did remember um how long are your veg times usually averaging to get your big plants uh let's see 
I, I go pretty typical on five five weeks, five and a half to six weeks, I guess, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously this is very strain dependent, but most of the time, uh, what time length are you looking at for your flowering? Oh, well, yeah, that's that's pretty uh, wide variation. <clears throat> um, and I, I and I always base I, I always base it, you know, based on the plant itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've gone as long as 90 days i think the that very first plant that when i was talking about that was 11 and a half ounces i think that one went for 105 days but maybe maybe that was maybe that was in total that might have been total days but but yeah i mean i'm i'm averaging probably you know between 65 to 70 in that area for flowering right on okay most, plant, most plants i think are in that zone but. so uh blaze one of our our good buddies here has a question for you um have you ever used worms in the uh, earth boxes i have actually and i i honestly don't know if they're still in there um, um. I put them in uh, this past summer. Uh, I have an episode where uh, on my uh, I have a YouTube channel too. By the way, I keep talking about it. Um, made while well medicated, in, in case anyone wants to check it out. But in that episode, I actually dug the earthworms up right out of the out of my backyard and put them in the earth boxes. I think we I put in maybe a eight to 10 i think per earth box and uh they were in there for a while because i saw them crawling around on top but i haven't seen them crawling around on top so they probably aren't in there anymore but... what kind of worms did you end up using they were just you know earthworms the ones that uh right on top of the soil gotcha right in the sod <laughs> yeah <laughs> indeed yeah with, there's so many earthworms that you just put a shovel in and dig it up and there's like a dozen worms so right on so you just got these worms right out of your backyard said hey throw them in and uh they they just rocked it out yeah yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful so yeah one of the things that i was going to say was you know let's definitely let everybody know where you can be found and and if they have questions for you about this stuff you know they can contact you on your youtube um so definitely uh, uh say that one more time for me and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a link to it and i'm going to put it in on the well, video too it's just like on my uh, logo there made made while medicating Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. This is great. Thank you very much. I'd like to also let everybody else here know that he has a server called Gaio. Very interesting information on there. Um, you have an IG? Um, I, I, I do have an Instagram. <coughs> I think it's uh, just made while well medicated there as well. But um, all of my stuff is. Um, if you go to rivenwaters.com, all one word, rivenwaters.com, R-I-V-E-N, um, all of my stuff is there on my website, but, you know, I'm also doing music now, and I actually just put another album out the other day, so... Yeah, it'll nice. be it'll be in uh, the new album will be out on the thirteenth. I think it'll be on iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, no, it's just Riven Waters. You know, that's my uh, artist name. Self-titled. Well, the album uh, is. Uh... <laughs> you caught me here. Oh shit. 
I don't know I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, I had called the album Transcendence, but it ended up getting named uh, Hero's Journey because that was the first name of the first song. So, but uh, yeah, I screwed awesome. up. And I uploaded the album. <laughs> Should we give him a follow, a subscription, a like? Guys, uh, please support Riv. Thank you for coming, Riv. Thank everybody Thanks. for being here. I want to have you back. I know Dave would like to have you back. And yes, absolutely. I'll, I'll definitely minutes. come back. I'll definitely come back. I, you know, now that I have the uh, your your channel. <laughs> awesome, man. And I, I didn't know you guys were doing this, honestly. So. Oh, geez. Yeah, if I would have known, uh, I would have thrown it to you much sooner. I didn't know you weren't on here. <laughs> My oh, apologies. Man, I didn't you guys were doing this at all, so. I'm not in the loop, I guess. <laughs> hey, that's okay, cause we're we're Busy making content, I guess. Well, that and we're we're still new, you know. We're we're uh, only in what this is maybe our third episode of of the Grow Pow Wow here, so we are very very new. So uh, it, it is quite all right that you hadn't heard of us yet. <laughs> whatever else have you absolutely so thanks again to riven waters and everyone for watching the grow pow wow